That's it. Well done, boys. Well done for the folks at home. There you are. There we go. You too, ladies and gentlemen. You could be these guys. Coming up next on Rugby Wrap Up, USA Rugby and London Irish star Bryce Campbell. Rugby Wrap Up brought to you in part by Balanced Palette, nutrition for peak performance. And the Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street, the world's best rugby pub. Hey everybody and welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in Midtown Manhattan talking rugby and ladies and gentlemen we're, we have Mr. Bryce Campbell of Team USA and the London Irish on the horn but first I wanted to address uh, a very cool thing uh, in, in rugby. You know we have uh, it takes a village in rugby that mentality throughout our global game and it's never more true here right now represented by what the buffalo rugby club and kamal patel memorial have done they've come up with a scholarship to give a student athlete in high school an opportunity to help alleviate some of the pressure of his uh, tuition and it's in the name of, of kamal who was unfortunately taken from us too early early in life because of a murder uh and it's just not a not a pretty story but this is something good that's come from it uh, his brother Donish uh, was instrumental in getting this off the ground, and this is the first ever winner of that uh, Kamal Patel scholarship. And Kamal and Donish played rugby together at Kenmore East High School up in Buffalo and then with the Buffalo Rugby Club, but everybody knows them or had, had come across them in some of the tournaments, particularly in Saranac at the Can-Ams where I saw Donish, and we discussed this, and uh, it's an honor to be able to bring this to you. Uh, and I know that Bryce uh, will be happy that he's part of this as well. And, and it's just a big thing for the rugby community. And this first ever Kamal Patel scholarship goes to Marcelo Masson of the Dwight School in New York City. Uh, Marcelo was nominated by his rugby coach, Heidi Rubenstein Brethel, and he will be attending Boston College in, in the fall. Very cool thing. And I just wanted to give that a quick salute and now welcome you, Bryce. And, and you, you're familiar with these kinds of things in the rugby community because you play professionally overseas and with Team USA. Yeah, thanks for having me, Matt. Um, that's awesome. Uh, such a cool, cool award. And um, can't tell you how much things like that help out kids um, moving on into university and college in the U.S. Uh, it's an amazing that, that they could put together a program um, to start giving kids some money to go play rugby in college. Yeah, and you know, you've played rugby in college. You've played rugby for the Eagles. You're playing professionally overseas. You've played professionally in America. Uh, I know for Glendale. Uh, your path has been an interesting one, and it started with the All-Americans where you really put yourself on the map. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, so my senior year at IU, Indiana University, um, I was asked to play for the Collegiate All-Americans, uh, did a tour to Australia. And from that, in a matter of, uh, I'd say, what was it, six months, I was playing for the Eagles against the Maori um, in Chicago wow. and then got my first cap a week later in um, Romania. So it's a pretty special time. And um, even now, it feels like uh, yesterday I was still playing at IU. Um, some great people. but. Yeah, it's been a really cool journey. All right, so let's get down to the nitty-gritty. I understand that you can get me tickets backstage for One Direction. Oh, geez. <laughs> Where are you going with this? I've, aren't you buddies with Connor Gilson? And isn't your teammate, him and uh, Brendan Mackin on the London Irish? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, good buddies. Good buddies. And didn't um, Connor grow up with one of the guys in, in One Direction? Hey. You're not wrong. All right. So what, yeah. what we are saying here is that you can get me backstage for One Direction. I can, I can try. <laughs> I guess I can try. Because I'd fit right no. in. I'd, I'd fit right into yeah. that crew, right? Uh, what does the number 497 mean to you? 497 is my eagle number. Aha. Uh -huh. He nailed it. eagle. Field. Nailed it. That's pretty good. All right. So you're off to a flying start. Uh, Bobby Dice? 
Yeah. That's the nickname. How did that come about? It's a family nickname um, that kind of came from my brother not having the best pronunciation as a young toddler. So my older brother, Jacob Campbell, uh, he's two years older than me. When I was a baby, um, he couldn't say baby Bryce. He said Bobby Dice. And uh, from then on, my whole family just called me Bobby or Bobby D. um, And it just stuck. That's actually that's actually a pretty cool nickname. It could have been a disaster, you know, if he pr- pronounced yeah. it a different way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it would have stuck if it was something too bad, but maybe it would have even more. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, cool. it's a cool little story. All right, let, let's talk some rugby. Cool. Just coming off your trip to Fiji, uh, Pacific Nations Cup, you played in the first two matches, then got a breather in the in the uh, the recent ones. Uh, what have your observations been now that you are getting to be a veteran of Team USA? And, and what, do you, what do you expect and what are your expectations? Um, I could go anywhere with this, but um, no, I think, I think the PNC was a massive tournament for us in terms of learning, um, getting some, some people playing time and really uh, taking steps forward going into the World Cup. Um, because we had a bit of a shaky ARC. Um, no, you guys probably know that. But one thing that you would definitely see tremendous uh, steps forward with is definitely our defense. Um, we're getting a lot more confident uh, defending against anybody. Uh, a dangerous team like Samoa and even Canada at times, they can put up some points. Um, fell a bit short against Japan, but um, they didn't run us off the pitch by any any stretch of the imagination. And I think it's real credit to the coaching staff, all of them, for getting getting that right. Well, from an objective standpoint, I think the purpose of the ENC is to get guys playing time, get guys acclimated to being in that environment. And for that alone, I think it was a success. You know, the rank, Steve and I talked about the, the world rankings after you beat Samoa, mm-hmm. but to me, I was like, you know, I don't see that the ranking thing is an important thing when you're prepping for the World Cup. And I think the important thing is finding out about players, finding out about uh, depth. And, you know, you guys had potentially eight starters that didn't partake in that match at all against Japan and still put up a good fight. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, the, the object is that no matter who we put on the field with the group of guys that we have, everyone should be able to do a job. And, um, I think we found out that we have a really good, really good squad of um, around 38 or so players, and that'll be dwindled down to 31 for the for the World Cup. But um, we've got more confidence. Uh, we got a lot of confidence in everybody uh, in that 38 man squad. So um, thank God we had the PNC to get a few more games under our belt and play a few guys and see what they can do. So speaking about you in spe- in specifics. Um, you're good at the breakdown. You're tidy with the ball. And there's one thing that, that's been noticeable is that your skills have kind of, your passing skills in particular have improved. You've been working on your skills. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's something that you you got to work on every day. And um, training with London Irish has, has helped me out a lot. Um, Les Kiss is, is doing all sorts of skills on our handling. And then the Greg McWilliams as well is, is very good with, with the skills aspect. So it's one thing that in time you keep working on it. and seems to get better. And you just mentioned Les Kiss, who was the Ulster head coach, who's now over there with Declan Kidney, a former Ireland coach, and they're now coaching you at Ulster. You've got them, and then you come into camp with Gary Gold. Some pretty good names. Yeah. Uh, yeah, London Irish, like, we've got a great training culture and co- uh, some coaches with some unbelievable experience. Um, so just being around people that know what they're doing and uh, with a wealth of knowledge, it it makes training every day so worthwhile for me um, because I got so much to learn. So I know you've had a ton of different memories because you've been around the globe playing rugby and it's been like a meteoric rise for you to get to this level. What, what couple of memories stand out the most for you? Let's, let's take one with the Eagles and then take one professionally. Uh, with the Eagles, one of the most special moments was um, the previous ARC to this one, um, when we went to the final match down in Uruguay and uh, did a proper job on, on Uruguay and, and won the tournament. Um, I think it was probably one of, the, one of the better games that we've played since I've been an Eagle. 
and uh, just the the atmosphere uh, around the guys after that was was really special. And um, I guess professionally, uh, just signing my first contract uh, for London Irish was was really special for me. It was um, a dream of mine as as a kid to to play professionally overseas. And um, th- when that happened, it was like I, I couldn't I couldn't believe it. So yeah, um, it's a fit. Yes, it's really exciting. And now we're back up in the prem. Um, so that'd be a, a real real challenge for me. And it's, it's exciting because I'm gonna be playing against the best in the world week in week out. So what was the biggest challenge for you making that leap from Major League Rugby to overseas? Probably just the depth of the squad. So um, when I was playing for Glendale, he probably had three or four guys that could play in my position, maybe. Um, and when I got the one at Irons, it was about eight. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you just you just get to, you have to compete every single day um, in the gym, on the training field, in the in the video room, um, because there's just so many so many good players at every every club uh, in England. So, and especially being, being an American, um, you're, you're a bit of an, out, bit of an outsider, not that they treated me like that, but, um, you just kind of feel like you have to do a bit more to, to, to stand out. Um, but it, it's just so special because we got such a good group of guys at London Irish that welcomed me in, and, um, picked me up along the way. So. Well, I got to tell you, it's exciting watching your rise. It's exciting watching the, the Eagles now, um, I'm not one of those folks that swears that you have to win every match, specifically in these warm-ups, because I think it's a warm-up and it's a, it's, a, it's a process, as Blaine Scully said, after the match and the loss. Uh, you know, it's part of the process of what you're going through to get to the World Cup. I wish you nothing but success. But one final question for you. Anybody call you soup? <laughs> uh, actually, no. No. Um, How'd they yeah. miss that one? I don't know. I, I think the Bobby Dice was too strong. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, uh, that's yeah. true. But Campbell Soup's good. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. That's tough. It's either way. You're winning on the nickname front, my friend. So <laughs> kudos to you. Uh, Thanks, Matt. Uh, again, just best of luck on the tour and and best of luck in the World Cup. Uh, I'm I'm excited for you guys. There's a, there's a slight chance I might see you in Japan. There's a there's a bigger chance that I'll probably see you in Vancouver. We'll see. But in the meantime, I want to thank you for coming on. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's great chatting to you and hope I can again soon. All right, brother. And on that note, we are out of time, but I want to thank Mr. Bryce Campbell for coming on. Matt McCarthy for Mr. Campbell at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in New York City, signing off. Anybody play the rugby? Oh, yeah. A little of the rugby. Oh, yeah. Rugby. The rugby. You like rugby? You like the rugby? Yeah. You damn straight you do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> rugby wrap up, guys. There you go.